Well, I don't know. That one went off uh, about halfway through. I'm just going to say that I'm trying to tell about Bill Cosby. That's in the news now. I'm going to uh, go back to um, when I was at Larry Flint's. Larry Flint was shot in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I was living in Marietta doing a book, medical malpractice book, MD, a license to kill. And it involved uh, Larry McDonald, who was U.S. congressman also and doctor uh, urologist at Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta. So I put his, this on prior tapes. Uh, the man who shot Flint was programmed under mind control, and anybody who this is not something you don't believe. These murders that I've spoken about, and they continue till today, have deliberately been done in patterns. And people just want to kill me. It's like kill the messenger. This was published in April of 84. I came here, and Mr. Flint, I came here literally to have a place. I'd been run up and down the side of the mountains. Things done to me. I had antifreeze put in me April through day of 80, and a letter from the U.S. Attorney, FBI, June the 23rd of 79, worked for the uh, District Attorney Fred Simpson in Huntsville in 80, lived at Warren House like a clue to the Warren Commission. They covered up the Kennedy. Kennedy was, uh, father was ambassador to England, and I was kidnapped. And... Um, I put all of this on other tapes, so I'm not going to go any further there. It was the Illuminati that kidnapped me but and brought me to Moulton, Alabama. What I really wanted to focus on here was uh, Larry Flint was uh, in court here at the Pop building, Roanoke, before I, well, I don't know if I can't, the time on that. But anyway, he was here, I believe, previously to me. Maybe I should look it up. I know I was on the Appalachian Trail trying to live. And um, it was about the parody, the toilet, and the outhouse and all that about Jerry Falwell. So um, Ennis was the probation officer, federal probation officer assigned to Flint here. And I'm going to fast forward to... um, Ennis, when I was living in the, on the Appalachian Trail, they charged me. I mean, this the whole thing is a sick, sick joke. We're living in the National Forest, and I was brought into the same federal court, the Poff Building, that Larry Flynn had been in, and Ennis was assigned to me, not as probation officer. I don't think maybe he was. I'm supposed to be a criminal now. I haven't committed any crimes. I was kidnapped, all this done to me. But anyway, it was a joke. I was taken into a room there where Ennis, the former uh, probation officer to Flint, now he's uh, assigned to me to find me a, a place to live. And I, it's been deliberately done keeping me homeless. But uh, first of all, he sent me down, and I sit down, and I'm on a whoopee cushion. And so you know the sound that makes. All of this has been geared just to torture the hell out of me and discredit me. But he went through this long list of Salvation Army, Rescue Mission, you name it. I'm such a low life, nobody will let me live there, which is a lie. But they won't. They go along with what law enforcement tells them to do. Now then, um, I told that part about Ennis, and I want to go to the murder of Ennis here, the son. And uh, he's the son of Bill Cosby, and that's what I'm talking about, uh, becoming patterns, and you can prove them. So his death was homicide, and uh, the Russian young fellow was supposed to have shot in as Bill Cosby's son. Now then, uh, this one you might not put together so easy, there's more to it, but McDonald's, the doctor I wrote about Congressman, whose plane went down, in 83, and I became a candidate and was flown out to Larry Flint twice that October in the campaign. The KAL, Korean jetliner, was en route from um, Juneau, Alaska to Seoul, South Korea. It went down, and by the way, former President Nixon, who's a part of this whole mess and stuff, uh was taken off that plane, so they had to have known that he was uh, the plane was going down. So um, it went down. All passengers aboard were killed, 
and he was shot down because it veered into Russian airspace. So anyway, it was a Russian student. So, you, you know, I could keep going, and you can't tell it just sitting here. The one thing I wanted to say was Victor Gonzalez was a doctor that I sued in 85, no, I'm sorry, 75. A former Fulton County uh, district attorney, Eugene Kaiser, was my attorney. The whole thing was shut up. They said that uh, I could go on to give in, uh, who typed my book at one point, the George Crime Lab. I, I could go on now with the law enforcement involved. FBI letter, U.S. Attorney letter, June the 23rd of 79. I've got antifreeze on April Fool's Day given to me that should have killed me. So I could go on with it. I put it on former tapes. I do want to go here, though. Uh, Victor Gonzalez, there was a suit and a seal put on it. And um, this man was not the JFK. I'm not taking up for him. He was part of my kidnapping, his dad and him from England. Uh, the, he was ambassador. JFK's father was Joe. And they helped the Illuminati and my own uncle kidnap me and bring me to Moulton, Alabama. So I put all that up. However, I wanted to say that Victor Gonzalez was also a doctor at Parkland when John Kennedy was taken in when he was shot. He comes, he's at Huntsville, Redstone Arsenal, when I'm there, and I'm being killed there. It's unreal. And that's when John Kennedy was, uh, well, he had to have come a little later, a year later after John Kennedy, yeah, was killed. Anyway, all that can easily be Googled, I assume. I've had it. And I lived there, I know. But anyway, Gonzalez preceded me, it was all set up, to Atlanta when I went there. My husband, John Childers, who's affiliated with the CIA, helped take me to this man. And what was done there, he admitted to me, it was a threat, that he had killed uh, Cindy. It was a 12-year-old girl that I saw walk out of his office, and uh, he he. He said he killed her, whether he did, and it was a Eastern Airline uh, stewardess that he killed because he had raped them. That's rape, total rape, um, and killed her. So I wanted to go to that. If you'll let me just show myself. I'm going to, here. I'm going to sit back in Wikipedia. This Victor Gonzalez, his son, I think, is even a psychiatrist in Atlanta as he is in the surrounding I don't I won't get that on. I'm gonna show me because this has been a life of hell and it, if this I find it hard to think that YouTube I don't get any more hits on it, but it hasn't done me any good. The media all knows that they're controlled by the Illuminati, the people that kidnap me. All you have to do is uh go to YouTube and plug in mind control search, and you can get some videos that are made quite proper. You have to kind of understand, uh, hopefully, what I'm going through and trying to tell this, and hopefully can find my sons, Mark and Scott, and this whole mess be told. It's been covered up. And my father's name that they smeared and the 99-year seal put on it is cleared and some justice done. Somewhere along the line of my life and my country's and my father's and mother's, and I'm trying to tell you about what the government's doing, um, and nobody seems to care. It's just like if they shut me up, then it'll all go away. It won't. 